Hello everyone, today I'm going to be going through a couple of policies that a couple of think tanks have brought out recently and they are absolutely insane in my opinion. So the first one is uh, an article from the Evening Standard saying citizen inheritance, give all millennials £10,000 to tackle generation gap, influential think tank says. So the article starts off with every young person in Britain should receive £10,000 when they turn 25 to help fix the integration contract between millennials and baby boomers an influential think tank has said now before i go on i do want to point out that <laughs> there is a difficulty of integration due to inequalities in the amount that baby boomers and millennials are making but it seems that this think tank maybe doesn't <laughs> realize that baby boomers are rich because they have lived longer and have therefore worked more in their life and have been able to build up value in terms of wealth and millennials are well my age so we haven't done anything good with our life yet but that doesn't mean we don't have the potential and i do think this idea is bad but i'll go through the article first the payment which has been described as citizen inheritance would help redistribute wealth at the time when young people need to pay for homes the group suggested the idea was floated by the Resolution Foundation's Integrational Commission, which had been working on the issue for two years before publishing its final report. There is no way they took this seriously if this was what they ended up with, in my opinion. But I'll, we'll take a quick look at the mission from the Resolution Foundation from their website. And their mission is, it is a non-partisan and award-winning think tank that works to improve the living standards of those in Britain on low to middle incomes. So it seems a bit reductionist that their answer for low to middle incomes seems to be just give them £10,000, which to me doesn't make too much sense given the long term effects of just giving a whole set of people at a certain age a set amount of money. The market will readjust to that, but we'll carry on. Its report suggests that with record numbers of people renting and unable to get into the housing ladder, and with many trapped in zero-hour jobs, radical action is needed to reset the balance. Alongside the citizens' inheritance are other proposals, including a 2.3 billion NHS levy, which are to be funded by a new national insurance contributions from pensioners. So people who have worked all their lives and saved up now have to get their money taken away from them again. I'm not a libertarian, but I think if you've put the money in a pension by yourself and it's already been taxed when being put into the pension, I don't think it should be taxed again. These people have earned their money. Please stop taking it away from them. They are old and frail, and we are young and tough. At least we should be. Mr Willits, Executive Chair of Resolution Foundation, said, Many people no longer believe that Britain is delivering on its obligations to young and old. But our commission shows how Britain can rise to this challenge. Britain doesn't need to deliver anything, it just needs to deliver freedom. I don't understand why these think tanks think that, well, this particular think tank thinks that Britain has to contribute to its people. No, the people contribute to the state in their own way, and to themselves mainly, and the state returns it by giving them freedom. But it's not really freedom if they're taking money from the people who've saved up all their lives, but well, what can you do about that? From an NHS levy to put healthcare on a firmer financial footing, to building more homes and a citizen's inheritance to boost young people's career and housing aspirations, how does giving people money improve their career? I understand the housing aspirations, but the people's career bit doesn't really make much sense to me. Our report shows how a new contract between generations can build a better and more unified Britain. So, these people are social engineers. They basically seem to have said to themselves, and... They don't really give a justification actually for this, it just seems to be Britain should give more to young people and they don't actually explain why. It's just people don't feel their country's giving them anything and that's because they don't seem to understand what their country should actually give to them, from a liberal perspective anyway. But these people are bloody lefty socialists. <laughs> they might not be that far, but they're certainly more for all that uh, redistribution of wealth than many people in the UK are. They don't seem to get that if you just give young people £10,000 and the idea is that it goes to a business, to a house, to whatever else, because it is specifically supposed to be for businesses and housing and basically things to, 
well i guess that could further their career i get the career thing now but basically that's just going to make all of those things cost ten thousand pounds more because you just reduce the value of it <laughs> you've just caused inflation in these markets because these people haven't earned their money from other places it's not harder to get now everyone can just buy a house it's ten thousand pounds out of their price bracket which a lot of young people will be in the same price bracket so you've just moved the price bracket up at ten thousand pounds so when this is introduced anyone who's 26 is or already 25 is screwed they are they won't be able to buy a house and then that's going to make them resentful <laughs> while the 25 year olds i mean assuming i'm assuming this isn't free money because it'd be stupid to give 25 year olds free money like this but they're not going to be able to buy it anyway because it's just going to be the same it's going to be the same real value as before since you've just inflated all the prices that young people are going to spend this money on and it doesn't make any sense not that i have a better solution but this one is absolutely terrible in my opinion these people need to read basic economics and now we'll move on to another think tank's ingenious plans. Men should work less to close gender pay gaps, says think tank. IPPR says changing men's working behaviour is a crucial component of equalising pay. I will say at this point, at least they seem to realise that the pay gap is actually justifiable, basically. and that, But they are now using that to justify well, making men work less, which I think is stupid like just let people work as much as they want i don't understand so men should work less than their employers and the government should help them to do so in order to close the gender pay gap according to a think tank a report from the ippr says that there is a gender pay gap in 80 percent of clearly defined occupations this point to seniority as a critical driver of the pay gap for most occupations men are in more senior high pay versions of the role than women so they work harder than women is that like I, I, I don't understand the problem here well i do understand the problem there's a pay gap that's completely justified but we're all social marxists now so whatever said catherine colebrook ippr's chief economist and co-author of the report the state of pay all companies with more than 250 employees were required to publish their gender pay gap for the first time in April, and the data showed that 8 out of 10 companies paid women less on average hourly basis than men. Disingenuous line again, but I'm sure we all know this by now, they are paid less because they do easier and less senior jobs. In fact, the report said it just above. The IPPR report says the majority of companies reported a gap that was smaller than their industry average, suggesting that even in the UK's large companies close their gender pay gaps, a disparity would persist at a national level. I, oh, this is a, such a fool's errand. What this report tells us is that firms are a big part of the solution to fixing the gender pay gap, but they can not do it on their own, said Colebrook. The solutions have also come from individuals and from government. In short, men need to work fewer hours and women need to work more. What if they don't bloody want to? Colebrook points out the motherhood penalty, which is a completely justifiable choice and also justifies the pay gap. If they spend time off work to be a mother, they are going to be less experienced than the men that don't. And most people would rather have it that way since they chose to do it. By which the gender pay gap increases sharply after women take time out of work to have children and find their ability to progress in the workplace after returning is curtailed. That's because they took time off. According to research from the Institute of Fiscal Studies undertaken from the Joseph Rowntree Foundation, by the time a first child has reached 20, mothers earn almost a third less per hour on average than similarly educated fathers. Okay, what about the women that would never became mothers? I think you'll find that the pay gap there is a lot, lot smaller than a third. The IPPR report argues that new ways of making sure women keep pace with their male counterparts on pay and seniority are needed. Women are less likely to negotiate salaries when starting a new job and when in post, so employers could rule out the possibility of negotiation altogether or make sure all employees earn at least as much as any new recruit on the same level, said Colebrook. Now hang on. Negotiation is a standard part of an interview. You can't just rule out negotiations because women are bad at it. All you're doing is pulling men down, and it's absolutely ridiculous that you do that. I just why do what do you have against men being generally more naturally 
disagreeable. It's in their nature to be better at these things, and also it's an indicator of success. But that doesn't mean women can't do it, and that's why some women earn more than some men. But you don't care about that. You just care that men are doing better off than women on average, and you can't see that maybe, just maybe, if you worked on yourself and made yourself more masculine, quote-unquote, then maybe you'd be on the same level as them. But no, you just want special treatment. God knows why. She said women were less likely to pursue promotions and suggested employers could automatically consider employees for promotion after a given length of time in post, interview all internal candidates for vacancies and encourage more women to apply for internal promotions. Do all this stuff for women because we can't do it ourselves. Women aren't children. Women are adults. Can you please treat them like adults instead of saying we have to encourage women to do all this it sounds like the crap at state schools where it just seems like oh i've got to encourage children to do this that and the other it's like yeah because children need it but women aren't children and they are when they're in full-time work stop treating them like children i'd find this incredibly patronizing and i'd get really pissed off i don't understand why more people aren't Companies could also advertise that salaries were negotiable. I don't actually have anything against that, but I assume those salaries were negotiable anyway. Offer successful candidates the option of a colleague to negotiate on their behalf. Oh yeah, that's really going to make you want to give a... That's really going to make an employer want to give an employee a raise. Oh, I can't speak for myself, so can I get this person to negotiate for me? Uh, why would I give you a raise? Oh, anyway, and match salary offers to make sure all employees on the same level earn as much as a new recruit. But those people, those people who aren't new recruits have been there and have more experience and will undoubtedly be better workers than a new recruit because a new recruit has to get all the experience that they have. So they deserve more money. They, uh, this is such a ridiculous thing. Are most new recruits women? Is this why you're doing it? Because that's what I suspect. More roles needed to be flexible and more senior roles should be offered as a job share, she added. <sighs> Jobs can be as flexible as they need to be. If you need flexible work, you have to work in part-time. I have very flexible work in my part-time job, and it's very good for me, because I don't do anything else with my time, apart from look for other jobs. But when I finally get a full-time job, I'm not expecting it to be flexible. And you shouldn't demand flexibility. You can try and negotiate flexibility, or get a job that is flexible. And usually they're paid less. But, man just these these ideas are mental how are you a chief economist well actually most things you're saying actually make sense but <laughs> the long-term effects of them are just got to basically make women look like children and it's ridiculous but changing the behavior of fathers for example encouraging them to take shared parental leave and work part-time was also needed she said the report states employers should encourage more men to work flexibly and to take time out of caring responsibilities they should do what they want like, all right, you can try and encourage them to do that, and I don't think it's the worst thing you could do. But I think most men would be more interested in working and providing for the family. And I, I think you're going to have to have crazy good incentives to get them away from work and be far, quote-unquote fathers, which what you really want is more stay-at-home dads, but I don't think dads are really inclined to, on that side. Some are, don't get me wrong, but most won't be. Colbrook said, changing men's work and behaviour is a crucial component of equalising pay. Employers could offer paid paternity leave on a use-it-or-lose-it basis, make jobs flexible by default and encourage men to job share. Mental. <laughs> so, you're, you're saying you should offer paternity leave with either use it all or don't use it at all. How many men do you think are going to use it at all? I think most families would say, look, I... I'd rather you go into work and make money for us because we're still coming out of a recession. We need the money. Make jobs flexible by default. It should be between the employer and the employee whether the job is flexible. You should not make it the default because it should be negotiated. But you seem to want to take negotiation out of job interviews. Anyway, Mary Ann Stevenson, director of the Women's Budget Group, oh my god, said the report painted a depressing picture but highlighted what could be done differently. Closing the pay gap is not just about employers. We also need to tackle the unequal distribution of care work, the gender division of labour within the workforce, and ultimately the type of work that we value and reward within society, she said. These people don't realise that when you're in a free society, inequality between the genders 
ma- magnifies. It it just gets worse. It diverges. And this has happened in Norway and Sweden, where they have taken massive steps to make it as gender equal as possible in terms of opportunity. And it's made one in ten nurses or something like that, and women, and, uh, men, sorry, and one in ten engineers are women, which is pretty low compared to countries like the UK. And my question would be, why would you want to change that? These people are doing what they want. There's nothing unjustified about that. And that's obviously naturally going to make a pay gap. But no, these people are social engineers. And it's really worrying because I don't want policies to socially engineer society. Because it's just a detriment. Norway's one of the best countries in the world. And Sweden, socially, is screwed. But its, it's economy is okay. And... <laughs> Doing things like this is just going to stagnate the economy because you're trying to put more regulations around things that let the economy live and breathe. And you're just doing your best to ruin it. Uh, to, to really sum up the point I'm making, do not engineer society. Every time it has tried to be implemented, you've either had a massive revolt or you've had people being thrown into situations they'd rather not be in. Let people be free. You do not need to close a wage gap. Do not give kids £10,000 for nothing. That's going to ruin the economy in both situations. In the meantime, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.